with the Sweet 16. And Sean, the ability to full court pressure, the two guard mentality of Barkley and Artest, point guard is going to be key to defuse the pressure. Derek Barkley, freshman point guard, had a terrific freshman year. Now Bootsy Thornton into Artest. Artest does a nice job with his step moves in the box area. He can step out for the three, and we saw the penetrating ability. Barkley, the three for Eric Barkley with a shot clock at five. Well, a little nylon early. He's confident, a big game type of player, Eric Barkley. And we should note there'd been some concern in the St. John's camp about the health and well-being of Ron Artest. He said yesterday at the press conference he had been sick on Tuesday night and that in uh, his desire to get to the restroom quickly, he tripped and hurt his foot. But the St. John's people tell us he's fine today, 100%. That shouldn't be a factor at all. Ron Pocket with a soft touch. And that's what they can do. Different people can penetrate and make shots. And the pressure handled by St. John's as Thornton got it over to Tyrone Grant. Nice post up. Our test. Into the lane, the whistle. He's got some magic in his game. That half court trap right over by the sideline is Death Valley. You notice St. John's got it to the timeline, delayed, and then posted up and was constructive in their offensive pursuit. Now on Lonnie Baxter, his first, Maryland's first, so our test goes to the line, the sophomore from Queensbridge, New York, for his first point. He's their leading scorer, third leading rebounder, second in assists. He's really the second point guard on the floor as far as Mike Jarvis is concerned. That key first foul, something he's got to be concerned about in his aggressive play. They're extending the floor, a little diamond trap here. They're not going to gamble, hold out, just force a slowdown for Maryland. Stokes, an excellent ball handler at the point, doesn't score very much, but he's a three-year starter and had a great assist to turnover ratio this year. Two-three zone, Sean. Francis, a step back for three. Rebound controlled by LeVar Postel. He's been a part-time starter this season for much of the year a sixth man, but Mike Jarvis felt it's important to get off to a good start tonight. Postel's one of his five best players, so he's in there at the beginning. Grant, strong move for two for Tyrone Grant. Undersized but effective. Also can kick out of there. Nice gamble here by Artes. And the save right in front of the timer's table. Thornton scores in transition. Well, they can get some cheap points, too. Merlin known for it, but St. John's adept at it as well. First bucket for Bootsy Thornton, a 6 0 run for the Red Storm, and St. John's leads by five. Now, this is the kind of game where Stokes can be a factor if they stay in the zone. He'll stick that three on occasion when they need it. Terrence Morris was fouled as he hoisted the runner in the lane. Uh, the read defensively just terrific as St. John's has that ability to close, a little step in. The slap back, good communication skills, and these easy baskets add up, particularly against Merlin, who causes clubs to turn over in bursts, Sean. You mm -hmm. see them get a few in a row. Morris makes the first free throw. He's an excellent free throw shooter at better than 82% for the year. Terrence, a sophomore from Frederick, Maryland. First team all ACC this year, along with Steve Francis. But Morris does it in a much quieter way. Gary Williams says, you don't really notice, and then you look up at the end of the night, it's another double-double for Terrence Morris. And they said he said there's no ceiling to his game. On the baseline, the runner for Thornton wouldn't go. Postel tried to jam and was met at the rim by Baxter. Numbers. Three on two. The pull-up by Poppet. Free throws by Jesse. And they get a 14-point game. Maryland had it down to nine, couple chances to get closer, squandered those opportunities. Now they're fading away again. Another air ball fired up from the corner, this one by Terrence Morris. And even in the zone, Postel got a check out. He's the one that eventually forced the ball to go out of bounds in St. John's favor. Look around the perimeter, Sean. All the four guys can handle, and Grant stays underneath. So it's tough to trap him and press. Barkley. 
Missed a shot following the rebounding action, apparently on Tyrone Grant. It is on Grant, and that's his fourth. And a good call, too. He warded off with his left hand, Curtis Shaw right on top of it. He didn't think he got caught with all the traffic around him. But Barkley, with a good move, but did not finish, which hurts them. Tyrone Grant, the only senior on this St. John's team. That's bad news for the rest of the Big East. And the rest of the NCAA in Division I with the St. John's success in this tournament. Francis takes a seat for a moment. Ron Profit at the line. The senior now lives in Delaware. His stepfather's in the Air Force. They moved around a lot when he was a young man. Still a young man, but as a young boy, he lived in several states and in Panama for three years when he was 11, 12, 13 years old. And he, they got out of Panama. I guess was there a takeover right at one point? Right before the problem there with Noriega. He said they knew it was coming and got out of town. He said he kept asking his mom, Mom, are we leaving? <laughs> Just relax, son. Great Ron's career for him. A young man, uh, maligned by Maryland fans during his career there, but had a terrific senior season. He said the, the first he saw Steve Francis was over the summer they played together in the summer league. You asked him, what do you think when you saw Francis play? He said, I thought, whoa, get your tickets to the final four. Well, it may not quite be the final four, but it's been uh, the most wins in a season for Maryland. Look at this the first year with Francis. There's a miss by Thornton. And he said he fit right in. Nobody on the team, the seniors, he guarded well, fit right in with the team. I could have with the passing exhibition there by St. John's. They didn't make the shot. And Barkley running the length of the floor. Third on Barkley, ninth team foul, so still a one and one. And in the next foul, Maryland will shoot two the rest of the way. And you know, Maryland hanging around here, Sean. Two gets it to 10. Gives them a little lift, get themselves organized. You got to make the free throw so you can get the coaching back into the game. Well, the only thing Maryland has done consistently well tonight is shoot free throws, 11 of 11 from the line. Terrell wants to be a coach. Uh, Gary told both of us that uh, Simon Gratz's kid just understood, didn't they were going to move Francis to the point. Yeah. And Stokes proved that he could play with them, could contribute and be solid. Found out he liked to coach. I got to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> Two free throws by the senior from Philadelphia, who might be playing in his last game at Maryland for Gary Williams. Indy five. Handling the pressure consistently has been the trademark of St. John's. Eric Barkley, wild layup attempt, but then Grant was fouled on the way up on a reach in by Danny Miller. Three fouls on Miller. Gary Williams has engineered a phenomenal turnaround in Maryland. Mm -hmm. The program was about as big a mess as it could be when he took it over. But now they're at the point where the folks in the metropolitan D.C. area, Baltimore, they're starting to get a little frustrated with the inability to get past the Sweet 16. First, first time they had uh, Keith Booth and Joe Smith were freshmen. Here's a look at his terrific coaching career in numbers, Sean. And then uh, 85, you know, they were sophomores. They had a couple of juniors. Uh, this was a, a team that I'm sure he felt could do the damage. And at that time, not a bad foul when you give Grant away. So you trade. One for maybe a deuce or a three. An 11 point game with three minutes to go. Gary Williams, by the way, is the only coach to direct teams in the Big East, ACC, and Big Ten. Morris had it swatted by our test. It's on the 2 3, back to a little trip outside. That one you want. I think it to Bootsy. Oh, they give it to Barkley. A little trip. You don't want to stop the clock, even though there was eight seconds left. Talk about the inability of these two coaches to get past the Sweet 16. Of course, Jarvis hasn't had as many trips to the Sweet 16. But the larger picture, all these years of coaching for these four coaches, all of whom are still alive, not a single final four appearance among them. And unfortunately, Bill, that's kind of what it's become now. You're mm -hmm. judged by what you do in the, in the tournament. Well, you build the program up, and then the NCAA takes over. Mm -hmm. If you're really down or struggling, people will live and enjoy it. And this is a case that, you know, Gary has done a marvelous job. And uh, tweak a little here, tweak a little there. And this thing is not over. But as he looks forward, what does he need is his decision to get to that next level and hopefully recruit that kind of a kid. Here's the trap. And you just see Miller a step late on the rotation, even though there was a foul in the trap. 
Stokes made one out of two from the line. The miss was the first free throw missed by Maryland. The 14 out of 15 from the free throw line. Let's check out the CBS Sports line stat of the game. No question about it. That end of the half run 20 to nothing. Maryland scoreless over the final 826 of the half. Carried into the second half of complete tournament coverage. Go to cbs.sportsline.com. And if Mike Jarvis is invited to a clinic, he must talk on a 2 3 zone. I mean, successfully, he's been a man to man guy. Yeah, but right now, the last two games in particular, Indiana and here against Maryland, they've been in good position. They understand. He said he practices it, and we have seen it in tape during the course of the year, but not to this length. And he made an interesting comment to Mike Jarvis. Postel makes the free throw. We did a lot of things during the regular season just to have done it with an eye toward postseason mm -hmm. play. Now there's a guy that's confident, huh? Mm -hmm. I was just worried about the next one. And then once again, a different look. Now the flat 3-2. Good communication. Francis, too strong off the glass. Postel the hit ahead. Barkley on selfish way to Bootsy. Well, in Baltimore, they're dancing. And why not? Bootsy with a solid performance. They do leak out, you can see. And uh, Gary Williams livid. He wanted the timeout. It's right after one of the officials. But the leak out for the easy deuce. And that's something they get out of tape. Everybody crashing, particularly at this juncture in the game where Maryland's anticipating going to the rim. You must protect the backcourt. Uh, Bootsy, impressive for the shot or the jam. As a 14-point lead, it's a tighter game out in Phoenix. Gonzaga leads by two with 7.41 to go. And we'll be getting you to the conclusion of that game when they're finished here. Francis in a lane, lost the handle but got it back. Stokes a three they desperately need. Rebound Grant. And they reach in and tie him up. So Maryland will get it back on the defensive tie-up. Lauren and Gonzaga winner advances to meet the winner of the game later tonight at America West Arena between Connecticut and Iowa. Francis to inbound. The Morris. They have a fresh 35 on the shot clock. Dixon doesn't need it. There's a three. And now get Perkin. And he does have a quick release. They talk about young men who've overcome adversity. Perhaps of all the people in this game, he's overcome the most. Both have won. Dixon's parents were drug users and both died of AIDS. Terribly tragic story. Both died while he was a teenager. He lost his mom, Juanita, when he was 15. His dad, Phil, when he was 17. He wears a tattoo with both of their names on his left arm. He says his mom was a wonderful person. She just got caught up with the wrong people. Mm -hmm. That can happen. And what's great is how he could change his life and get involved. Mm -hmm. in an academic arena and use basketball as a tool to be successful. And as I noted, what a quick stroke. He's going to be a nice offensive player for Gary. Big night for Barkley. Now seven of nine with the miss from the line. There's 20 points and nine assists. And the lead is 12 with 145 remaining. A little different look every once in a while. Mike Jarvis a little trapped that time. Diamond press. Francis couldn't get the three. Our test the rebound. Dixon pestering Barkley. What a spin move. He is tantalizing. And this art test is a Rembrandt. And he does everything, whether they need it ball handling or selectively post up. And just terrific passing skills. As, as Mike mentioned, the point guard mentality yes. of the forward as well as Barkley. Tough to beat. Our test and Barkley having a good time here in Knoxville. They're both childhood friends of the great Shamiqua Holdsclaw, one of the great women's basketball players of all time. The All-American here for the three-time defending national champion Tennessee Lady Vols. And our test and Barkley hooked up with Shamiqua for dinner a couple of nights ago. Mm -hmm. She's still in action in the NCAA tournament. What a great atmosphere here, this building. Mm -hmm. And they get some outstanding crowds for their women's sports as well as uh, Jerry Green did a great job with the men's program this year. Disappointing early departure for the Tennessee men. 
Stadium is the four seed. St. John's on its way to victory, leading by 13 with a minute 10 left. Morris lost it to Grant. And look at the pressure, and really not a double other than the one time earlier. One minute left. One minute left of the game. The Maryland season is going to end at 28 and 6. Once again, it'll end in the Sweet 16. Foul on Morris. That's four on Terrence Morris. Well, St. John's will advance to the Elite Eight for the first time since 1991, and they'll meet the winner of our next game here in Knoxville. Auburn and Ohio State. And the celebration has begun in the cheering section. Lou kind of second, leading the cheer. How about Louis uh, from a second baseman for St. John's? His uh, teammate was Mario Cuomo, the governor, mm -hmm. to be one of the extraordinary coaches in this profession and one of the sparkling personalities. He walks in a room and everybody enamored by him. And great with people, great with youngsters. And he feels off of Ron Rutledge, a longtime assistant to Louie. On the right there. Yeah. Brian Mahoney, another former head coach also here on the trip. The university's been very loyal to those former mm -hmm. coaches. They're all still working at St. John's. Profit, foul and a pass off. Fouled by Bootsy Thornton. His fourth. Mentioned he's from Baltimore, among those who've been cheering for him throughout the season. Antonio Freeman of the Green Bay Packers. They're from the same neighborhood in Baltimore. Freeman's been showing up wearing Bootsy's jersey. He's at the Big East tournament. He's at the Duke game. And there he is. He's here again tonight <laughs> with the jersey on. Oh. Wasn't Bootsy wearing a, an Orioles hat? They were telling us yes. up in New York. Has to represent, not a huge Orioles fan, but he needs to represent Baltimore in his travels as a member of the Red Storm. There's Freeman, the Packer, <laughs> tonight wearing the jersey. Well, Bootsy Thornton. I know he can't stroke the jumper like Bootsy. Uh, they both grew up in a very tough neighborhood and have managed to get out and become successes, thanks in large part to athletics. Foul was on Morris, his fifth. So he is fouled out, but he is our Chevrolet player of the game for Maryland. Nine points, four rebounds, and three block shots. And Eric Barkley had 22 points and nine assists. Earned Chevrolet Player of the Game honors for St. John's. And he's one of those guys who seems to rise Ooh, up when the game he likes, is. He likes the stage, Sean. Yeah, Duke, he had the double double. Overshadowed by, by what Bootsy Thornton did that night with 40 points, but Barkley gave them great floor leadership. And 12 points and 11 assists against Duke. He doesn't think if they get another shot at Duke, that might happen. Well, the way this know, is going. They're not looking that far forward, but uh, that guy there, uh, big heart, big Valentine, competitive, and doesn't mind taking a hit, taking a big shot. The choreographer for Mike Jarvis. 74-60, 30 seconds left. So Art has furious in the back that they weren't in the right position defensively. And look at the, the little nudger. And Danny Miller called for the reach-in foul. And Maryland may just want to call it off now, Bill, down by 14 with 20 seconds yeah, left. Not much. Uh, I'm sure Miller being advised by Gary and others just let it go. They spoke to some of his staff last night, Jimmy Pathos and Billy Hahn, and uh, looking forward to this, the, the anxiety of a big game and then the letdown mm -hmm. after that. And it's just, it's gotta be devastating for the team, the school, the staff. Barkley has 23 now. And Zag is still leading by two out west with three minutes to go. And then as soon as we're finished here, We'll keep you with constant updates on that action. Get a live look in. Our test goes out. We'll rest up for the final 21 seconds and get ready for Auburn or Ohio State. He will not be asked to be the spokesman for the uh, airline industry, though, huh? How many of the food? 
And he was in good health. And unfortunately for Mike, that was the case. And Barkley goes out to Hugs after a memorable performance. Well, the hugs continue from Louis on, huh? Francis into the lane. Steve, just 15 to, seconds left. I'm sorry, Shelly. You just didn't get enough of that against zone all day, all evening long. Out of bounds, last touch by Colin Charles. So Francis forced a turnover. Really didn't get to see the real true Steve Francis either. That's no. a shame in it. And I think a lot of it was to due to the zone and gearing the defense towards him. Long shot off the mic from Norman Fields just in from Maryland, and that's it. The storybook first year for Mike Jarvis as head coach at St. John's continues. The quiet, humble man has led St. John's to the Elite Eight. The final score. St. John 76, Maryland 62. Here's Greg Gumbel in our CBS Sports studio. All right, Sean, Sweet 16 contests have not been kind to the Terps. They lose for the fourth time in the last six years. Let's send you very quickly to Phoenix, Arizona. Regional semis in the West. Gonzaga leads it by two over Florida. Gus Johnson and Dan Bonner. Inside Haslam and a layup for Florida. 2.27 to go. We're tied at 67. And Florida once again able to get the ball inside. Hall to the basket and a foul from behind. On Eddie Shannon. Hall's done a great job handling this pressure in the second half of play. And the bracket in the West. Florida, Gonzaga, and Connecticut, Iowa coming up next. So Quentin Hall at the free throw line. Only one of four tonight. He's shooting two. And the first drop score. Now let's check out the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. It's three-point shooting. Gonzaga, 12 of 22. Florida, 5 of 22. Second one, no good for Hall. Bulldogs up by one. Approaching the two-minute mark of the second half. And a man defense for Gonzaga. Florida has been very anxious to get the ball inside. Eaton has four fouls in there. Haslam really working oh! against him. Right, got it back. Blocked from behind by Eaton. Ball squirts out from on the deck. And jump ball to go. And that will be a possession arrow jump 